Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. That was just an abridged look at the progression I made practicing a single-handed draw from this jacket. It's called the Echo 1-1. It's from Bernie Workwear, and it was designed to be an improvement over other concealed carry jackets that are already out there on the market. It does that by giving you two really large concealment pockets that are fully sealed off and backed with molly looping that alternates elastic fabric with loop fabric. This allows you to use a wide variety of real holsters, some you might already own. And I found that this allows me to conceal a full-size handgun in a very stable manner that makes it a lot easier to draw than the other systems I've used. And that's why it's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Echo 1-1 is a heavy work jacket built around what Byrne calls the adder system. These are the large concealment pockets placed on the front of the jacket where they are most readily accessed while helping to give the jacket a more natural appearance when carrying a handgun. The top half of each pocket is sealed with a Velcro border that's reinforced with snaps at each corner. The interior is fully lined with molly with the black rose being elastic and the brown rose being Velcro loop fabric. The pockets are actually pretty standard for a work jacket, with side opening insulated hand warmers and an outer gusseted flap pocket closed with a snap. That flap doubles as the pull tab for the adder system. One yank of the flap and the snaps and velcro pop open to reveal the grip of your handgun. The lower half of the pocket is fully stitched, which could aid in your ability to retain your firearm in a struggle as well as help keep it in place in the case of extreme movement during your draw. I chose to go with the Purse Defender from Crossbreed Holsters. It's a minimalist Kydex holster with hook fabric both glued and riveted in place. Its small size allows a lot of mounting options while keeping your pistol secure. The Echo 1-1 is still a work jacket at heart with Talon brand zippers throughout, including the two roomy outer breast pockets. The plaid liner is quilted for warmth and believe me, it is warm indeed. The left breast has a large elastic loop line pocket with an inner Velcro closure. The right breast has an outer smartphone pocket large enough for my iPhone 6 in its Magpul case. Behind it lies a very deep pocket that also has elastic loops to stabilize its contents. An outer slot allows you to carry pens clipped either inside the pocket for secure carry or outside the pocket for faster access. The Echo 1-0 is the vest which matches the Echo 1-1 in every way except of course for the lack of sleeves and elastic drawstring hood. The liner is also a lighter fleece material than the quilted insulation of the jacket. Both the jacket and the vest are also available in black. The Echo 1-1 is a warm jacket. Here in North Carolina, luckily, we don't get a lot of opportunity to wear warmer clothing like this. But I feel comfortable wearing this maybe when it's 50 degrees or cooler when I'm inactive, 40 degrees or cooler when I'm active. I wore this with the hood up and the drawstrings pulled tight one night when it was 25 degrees and we had a really good wind chill when I was out walking my dog and I still felt nice and toasty. The pockets themselves are insulated. It helps to reduce with the printing of your firearm or whatever else you're carrying in the adder system, although it does add a little bit more of a bulge than, than I naturally have. But you can see I've got a G19 in this pocket here. I just have a, a lightweight pair of gloves in this pocket and there really isn't any difference. So somebody looking at you wearing this jacket with a firearm in place isn't going to be thinking that you're somebody packing a gun because that's the other thing. It doesn't look like tactical wear. It doesn't look like a shoot me first jacket. This is work wear. It looks exactly like the kind of clothes you're going to wear when you're chopping wood, whether you're doing construction, whether you're doing road crew work, whatever. Closing the pocket up once you have a fireman in place can be a little tricky, but I found the easiest way is to start with the back snap and then work your way across the top of the hook and loop, get that front snap in place, and then just work your hand around the pocket. That perfectly seals it off. Now there's no way for anybody to see that you're carrying a firearm. It's perfectly secure. Again, it doesn't print, but it's readily accessible by pulling open on that flap. Burn Workwear clearly knows how to make a jacket, not just the adder system. But one of the best features about this jacket is how low it goes. Here is the top of my belt line. And with the tail of the jacket so low, I can bend forward and I'm not gonna be exposing the small of my back. However, there are snaps on the sides 
that I can pop open if I need more mobility. In fact, they actually act kind of like a pressure relief valve. <laughs> if I'm bending, reaching in an awkward position, those snaps will just blow out instead of my jacket ripping, which might happen if it were just stitched on the sides here. Unfortunately, I know from firsthand experience how difficult it is to draw a firearm from inside the waistband carry while sitting down in a vehicle strapped in. I had to deal with not only the awkward position of my holster because I was sitting down, but also the seatbelt. I was very lucky that day that I was able to get my firearm out in time, but I wouldn't have if I were wearing a heavy jacket that day. So I've grown accustomed to when I get in a vehicle, I pull my entire holster out from inside my waistband and I'll shove it between the thigh bolster and the console. It's a great way to drive around with the firearm because it holds it nice and handy. But when I get to my destination, I have to look around and make sure nobody's watching while I stand up. I, I can't put it inside my pants while I'm sitting down. Uh, and even though I'd, I'm in the legal right, nobody wants to be the source of a man with a gun call. I see this as a huge advantage of the adder system because I don't have to have two modes of carry, one for inside my vehicle and one for outside my vehicle. Because even though I'm sitting down, I'm strapped in, and the seatbelt is coming right across the pocket, that's carrying the firearm, all I have to do if I need to access the firearm is to pull on the flap. It moves the seatbelt out of the way and even with one hand I can draw the firearm and take care of the bad guy if I need to. It's not only more convenient, it's not only more comfortable, I think it's actually a safer method of carry because I don't have to handle my firearm over and over and over again throughout the day. Time to go back to the range where I work through getting used to a two-handed draw. Note that I did a ton of dry fire practice first, making sure I could easily draw without sweeping my left hand in the process. Even still, I start live fire very slowly and mechanically, then gradually accelerate my speed while smoothing out the transitions between major movements. There are two big mistakes to make here regardless of your chosen method for drawing from concealment. Number one, carrying concealed without practicing your draw, and number two, rushing your progression from dry fire to live fire. I think it's only natural to want to set things that are especially heavy like a firearm deep inside a pocket because it tends to carry more easily, it tends to look more natural. But I found that the best place to set up a holster inside one of these adder system pockets is as high as possible. You want to get it not right up to the edge because it makes it difficult to close the top, but as high as you can get it and easily close the top. The reason being is when you open a pocket, it only goes about halfway open. And if you have it very, very deep, as I started out doing, it makes it difficult to find the grip. You're actually, even if you hold the flap open with your, your left hand, you're still bumping into the flap, grabbing the grip. But as you can see with this G19, it's nice and high. In fact, it actually pulls away from my body a little bit as I go for the grip. And it makes it very easy to draw, get my left hand out of the way so I don't sweep it before making the shot. The adder system pocket is so roomy, I thought I'd try using the lanyard mounted trigger cover that my wife uses in her purse. We both carry with a round in the chamber and a topped off magazine, and it would be stupid and irresponsible to do so with an exposed trigger. Many companies make these, and the idea is that you tie the lanyard to something inside your bag. In this case, I'm looping it through the molly. That way, when you draw your pistol, the lanyard tugs the cover off the trigger guard and you're good to go. Trigger cover or holster never carry anything inside the same pocket as your pistol that isn't secured to the molly. You don't want something interfering with your draw or getting inside the trigger guard as you reholster. I don't even need to live fire this because dry fire is all I needed to do to realize I don't like this setup. As I said, I always carry it with a fully loaded mag and a round in the chamber. Gun is ready to go, point and shoot. So that means I would never ever carry a firearm without a trigger guard. And these little lanyard mounted trigger guards are pretty cool for purse carry, for bag carry, things like that. But because it's still loose in the pocket, I found I had to hunt 
for the grip. It wasn't in the same place. A lot of times it was in an awkward position, an awkward angle for me to make a draw. And so that's why I would stick to an actual holster Velcroed in or mollied into the webbing, just like that crossbreed holster, which actually works for the G17 as well as the G19. Before committing to a concealment system like this, you have to consider the implications of off-body carry. Obviously, while I'm wearing this jacket, I have access to my handgun whenever I need it, and nobody's gonna be able to take it from me, at least not more easily than if I were concealing it anywhere else on my body. But as soon as I take this jacket off, I could separate myself from my handgun at a time of need. I also make it vulnerable to someone else getting access to it, whether it's somebody who knows it's there and they're getting a hold of it when they shouldn't, or somebody just taking my jacket, not realizing that there's actually a handgun inside it. But I guarantee you, as soon as they start checking the pockets, they're gonna find it. As I tell other people who are considering bag carry, whether it's a purse or a sling bag or a backpack, you have to treat whatever item you're putting your handgun in like a giant holster. And don't do anything with that thing, whether it's a jacket, whether it's a bag, that you wouldn't do with a holster with a handgun in it. As long as you keep that in mind, as long as you think through the progress that you're gonna make throughout your day before putting this jacket on, I think you're gonna do really well. What surprises so many people is when I tell them the price. This is available for $105 with free shipping on Amazon, and I've got the link in the video description below. I don't think you could get the vest there. I don't even remember what the price is for this, uh, but the, the price on a jacket is actually less than what you'd have to pay for a competing brand jacket that isn't even a concealment system. So I think it's really cool, first of all, that a conventional clothing company like Burn got into supporting supporters of the Second Amendment with such a, a great article of clothing and also that it's extremely effective compared to the other options that are out there. If you want to learn more about the Echo 11, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You can see the links right here. And be sure to click somewhere over here to subscribe so you can see my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.